Hello everybody, welcome to Wednesday night, 6 o'clock service. Amen. <laughs> we might as well laugh about it, praise God. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word. It's your word that's what leads us, guides us, directs us, and develops us, and encourages us, and heals us, and grows us up in the things of God. And so when the Spirit of God speaks to us, and we, the word is backed up with what the Spirit of God is saying. It's a double whammy. And we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk about today how to receive. or have The word receive is the same word as take. And we're also going to talk about what the devil does to try to make you think you're receiving. Uh, but... If we're to participate with him, we know we're not going to receive. So we're going to, God's showing us, give us some light on that today too. So Isaiah 53, 5 says, by stripes, you're healed. You know that you can have that if you take it. The word take and the word receive is the same thing, the word have. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you is yours too if you take it. You got to know how to take it, of course. Okay, now, so let's look at what the enemy tries to do for a minute. I feel, I feel like my friend, his, he's a pastor of a church here in town, and his uh, son got put in jail. And the, to save a lot of complications, the department there, the law enforcement department that put him in jail, called his daddy in the middle of the night and said, your son is in jail here. We want to know if you just want to come pick him up. We're not going to press no charges or nothing. Just come pick him up. I think maybe you can help him more than the jailhouse can. So he went down there and he was talking to the his son and he got his son out of there and everything and the law enforcement called him a couple of days later and said, well, how's everything going? He said, you know, I can't figure it out. I taught him about Jesus. I taught him about the Bible. I taught him about church. I taught him about different things in the Bible. He went to all the church services that everybody else went to. I can't figure out how in the world he got put in jail. And the law enforcement said, maybe you should have taught him a little bit about the devil. <laughs> and his daddy thought about that and he said you know what I think you're right <laughs> so we need to be taught a little bit about how the devil does stuff too amen so in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 it says the natural man so how does the enemy come in tries to through the natural man our five senses our emotions receives not the things of the spirit well, we have a spirit that's connected to God when we ask Jesus to come in. So now we're connected to Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so what does the enemy do? He just tries to keep us in our five senses. He, things happen in our life. Everybody it does. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're a preacher or not. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. There's things that happen in your life that tries to get you and keep you over in the natural realm. See? If you don't know that, then, you know, you're going to wind up in the, uh, be locked out of the spirit part of your life, the Holy Spirit part. So, the, first of all, the natural man, it's foolishness unto them. What's foolish? Well, Proverbs 15, 22, the, man, the answer of a man's mouth is ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Well, that's foolishness to the natural man. See, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter how much education you have or how much education you don't have. If you're trying to operate out of your intellect, then when God says in Proverbs 15, 22, that uh, the joy of the Lord is your strength, and like, now God, wait a minute, you don't understand. We just had a tragedy. You don't, God, now you don't understand. Now, wait a minute, you're telling God that God don't understand. <laughs> no, even it says in Hebrews that the joy that was set before him on the cross 
wait a minute now. Uh, for a second, even Jesus said, now, is there some other way to do this, God? <laughs> but he said, no. So then he, the joy set before him. He started ha, ha, hawing too. The movies don't portray that. But that's what the scripture says. It says that the joy of the Lord was even the Lord's strength, even though he went through the cross. There's misunderstandings. There's things that just seem like what in the world is going on and their natural mind is trying to get you involved in it and your natural feelings is trying to get you involved in what's the circumstances of life are going on but here it says it's foolishness we need to get to a place in our life is you know what the things of the world are foolishness here it says that the natural man says that the things of the spirit are foolishness. But we need to realize, now wait a minute, the enemy is just trying to keep me in the natural realm. And if I'm in the natural realm, then I'm not in the supernatural realm. If I'm not in the supernatural realm, even though Isaiah 53, 5 is mine, by his stripes is mine, I can't have it. Even though Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me is mine, I can't have it. Why? Because I'm not operating in the supernatural, I'm operating in the natural. See, you receive the things of God first in the spirit realm. Then it affects your physical body. But if you're trying to operate and, and even use the scripture sometimes... In the physical realm, trying to change your body, it's backwards. Are your circumstances of life? That's backwards. No. We receive it first in our spirit. I have it. It's mine. No matter what it is. That's supernatural talking. That's faith talking. Then we can see it, wear it, drive it, smell it, eat it, enjoy it in the natural realm. See, it's received first in the spirit realm. So let's read that one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit. So put the Spirit first. For they are foolishness unto them, neither do they know them, because they're spiritually discerned or spiritually first taken. Say it like that. Proverbs 15, 22. Uh, the answer of our mouth, this is how we tell if we're in the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, or in trying to participate with another spirit. We know who that is. Uh, the enemy. Answer of our mouth is joy. Everybody else is ha, 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 and you're a bump on a log. Guess what? <laughs> you're not going to be able to operate in the things of the spirit. No matter what's going on. But, you know, if, if, if we are ha, 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 or are we, oh, me, oh, my, oh, my God. Oh, I don't know what's going on. No, that's just the enemy trying to keep you over the five senses. Why? Because he knows when you respond to God that God's going, the, the Spirit of God will take you above all that mess. But if you're just operating in mess, you're going to have more mess, more mess, more mess, more mess, more mess, more mess. This is going to happen and that's not going to work and this is going to keep, it's just going to keep messing. So if you want to change that, uh, can anything go my way yes can anything turn out into my favor yes when when we ha 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 we should i mean no matter what's going on we should just ha 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 all you're doing you're praising god see that mean when the praises go up the blessings come down you can say it like that that's old school really because when the praises go up the blessings start activating inside of us they're God's not up here no more. He's in us. See, uh, to religious-minded people, yeah, he's up here. We're praising God and blessings come down. I understand all that. But in reality, when we ask Jesus to come in, the Holy Spirit comes in, God comes in. So the blessing, we start connecting to the blessing inside of us. See, it's in, it's who we are in Christ. In, 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 not around. In, see, we're born-again Christians. We're born-again people. We're born-again believers. So when that happens, that, that great exchange, you call it, well, then we can't help but 
enjoy God. Now, you, now I got to. Now, you think about this. About the time you think you got this faith stuff, about the time you think you got the Word of God, about the time you think you got ha ha ha, something, something. Let me say it one more time. Something will happen that will knock your faith head off your shoulders down by your feet where you're kicking your faith head belief around with your own feet. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Mike? I've been there, done that. But it doesn't matter. You got the mind of Christ. Amen. You got the mind of Christ. And you can feel around down there, pick up your faith head down there by your feet, put it back on your head where you can think right. And how do you think right? The second, Proverbs 15, 22, the answer your mouth is ha, ha, ha. The, an the second that you tap into the supernatural, boom, you connect with God. Then he elevates you up past all that mess. So you can live by the circumstances of life. But you know what? Them circumstances of life are going to keep right on going. But you don't have to participate with them. Oh, but you don't know what they said about me down there. Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, but you don't know what they did to me. Oh, my. Oh, me. But you don't know what I'm, feel what I'm going on in my physical body. Oh my, oh me, I know all that stuff. It happens to everybody. You're not secluded from it. But the thing is, a second, you'll even see some of them people that might have run their mouth ragged over you. But when you do the ha ha and the he he, you'll even kind of forget what they even said. You might see them at Walmart or something and say hi, and you're trying to wonder why they're still mad at you. Or maybe your neighbor acted up right in your front yard you know, and then you wave at him, you're like, well, why are they acting like an old sourpuss? <laughs> oh, oh, I kind of, I forgot about what they said or done or spoken. You just be your cheery self, see? And when you do that, it's, you might have grown a little bit. <laughs> you might have just grew a little bit, amen? And that's okay. So, Father, we speak to these people right now in Jesus' name. Be healed today. Be set free today. Be delivered today. There, and I, I, and those people on here, they want to. They hear this word, and they want to receive Jesus. Maybe you just knew an historical Jesus or a history Jesus, or even read the Bible like a history book. I had a friend one time, and he we had we had forty acres out there on the highway, and uh, he he said he lived in the back, and he said, "Well, I read the Bible." He wanted like a badge or something, you know, to put on his shirt. I read the Bible. See, he, he thought because he read the Bible that now he can get it to work for him. Well, that's good you read the Bible. Shoot, I read the Bible on how many times? Different versions, and I got a whole stack of them in there. Study and all kind of stuff. Listen to it. I mean, that's my whole life. But just because you read the Bible one time or ten times or a hundred times don't mean you're going to get it to work. See, faith is a lifestyle. It's not because you read the Bible one time. And it's good, you know. It's, it's, it, it, maybe you hear it. Maybe you listen to one of these videos. It's not because you listened one time. I had a, a, a lady one time. She got really upset with me because we sent her husband some uh, DVDs and he listened to him, and uh, he, she said, well, all you have to do is listen to him. I said, well, yeah, you do have to listen to him. But then faith is a doer of the word. That means when it says Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes you're healed, that you say Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes you're healed. Well, she won't fight about it. Well, you can't. It says Isaiah 53, 5 is yours if you take it, not fight about it, not argue about it, not fuss about it, not cuss about it, not get upset about it. Why? Because she was operating in a religious mindset. See? No, 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 no. Whatever the Bible says, it says Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes your head. It don't matter what your body says, it matters what you say. The same way with Romans, 
uh, 10, 9. You confess Jesus as Lord. This is how you do it. Some of you just sitting there looking and waiting. This is your part. You say you confess. Just say, I confess Jesus as Lord. Believe in my heart that God's raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. I'm born again. So what are you doing? You're connecting with God. Now, when the circumstances of life arise... Don't do the old me, I don't know what to do, I, I lost all the scriptures and I don't even have an eye. No, go back to them videos and, and participate. There's just the slightest adjustments, the biggest change. I don't know how many reports I get. People say, well, if I feel depressed or anxious or sick or broke, busted, disgusted, I start watching those videos and that lifts that off of me. It's the anointing. The word lifts, the word, the word is anointed and it lifts stuff off of people. The word doesn't bog you down, it lifts it up, lifts you off. So no weapon formed against you can prosper if you take it. Well, how do you take it? You say no weapon formed against me can prosper. See, don't do the molly grubs down there on Grumble Alley. Don't do that. Mm -mm. And why? Because the devil's playing for keeps. You, you look in your own life, when you start molly grubbing, what happens? Your body starts falling apart. <laughs> so what do you got to do? You have to stop molly grubbing and start haw, haw, hawing. See, when you stop haw, haw, hawing, he's sitting right there waiting on you to stop so he can just enter in and do some crazy something. But you just keep right on. Doesn't matter. Uh, the other, uh, I mean, years ago, I was sitting in a service and it just came to me. I don't care who or what dies, the word works. And I'm going to keep right on working it. Ha, ha, ha. And it keeps on working. I don't care how big the bill is or how little the bill is. The same God that brought in $5 so we could get a sandwich in a Coca-Cola. It's the same God that brought in $50 so we can eat a little bit better. Amen. Same God brought in whatever the amount is to pay all the bills anyway. And the money that's coming into the ministry houses, the people, most of them don't know it. It's way below what, re what it really costs to support all of them, even the church. So what do you do? You just believe God and ha, ha, ha. We've been there 18 years. Praise God. And there's people. I mean... Even these videos being produced, the bills being paid, everything. There's people that come alongside that want to get involved in the blessing. And they, you know, some people they give uh, one time. Some people give once a month. Some people give once a week. The blessing overflows into them too. This is the work of God. So God takes that, multiplies it, gives it back to them. Consistently is where the power is at. So it's a wonderful See, it's wonderful. What do you do? I got a stack of bills right here. Oh, you'll just laugh at them. Amen. Amen. And then everybody pitches in, does great things, and, and we, we, we distribute and do what we're supposed to do, too. And then God distributes back into people's lives, too. Amen. So it's good to be servant of God. And you're a servant of God, too. Amen. So be blessed today. And be whole today. See, there's people that's got terminal things. There's people that just has pain. Uh, both of them are, can be racking. But just a ha, ha, ha. Don't quit taking your medicine. Don't quit going to the doctor. Don't quit none of that. We're for doctors. Just because you go to the doctor or don't. There's no one in the Bible that says, if I don't go to the doctor, I'm in faith. You don't say that. And there's nowhere in the Bible that says, if you go to the doctor, you're in faith. No, if you're in the Word and speaking the Word, that's how you know your faith's working. It's got nothing to do with any of those things. Even, even if, uh, say, you got a checkup and got a bad report or a good report, neither one of them has to do with your faith. I don't mean you're in faith because you don't have pain. And it don't mean you're in faith because you don't have pain. Well, how do you know if you're in faith? Because you're saying the Scripture. Because you're responding to the scripture, which is ha, 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 and then say the scripture. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Whatever it is, there's a whole bunch of them in there. Just pick one. Amen.
So be blessed today. If people want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah, uh, in, uh, in Acts 19, there was people there, and they didn't even know they wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They just walked up on Paul, and Paul said, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And uh, they said, Well, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. We're of John's baptism. What's that mean? That means they wasn't even born again. So he shared the gospel with them. And then they received Jesus. And then they, they was born of the Spirit, but they hadn't been filled with the Spirit yet because all through the Bible, when it talks about being filled with the Spirit, that the evidence is speaking in tongues. So they hadn't been filled with this. They hadn't even received Jesus, so they received Jesus. He preached the gospel to them. They received Jesus. And then they was born of the Spirit, but now they want to be filled with the Spirit. So he laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak. The Holy Spirit didn't take them, slap them in the head, knock them in the head, push them in the floor. I'm not against any manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But all through the Bible it says that the evidence of being filled with the Spirit says, well, it's great this or great that. Well, the Bible says that it's speaking in, speaking in tongues. I'm a Bible teacher, so we've got to be stickler for the Word. So he just came along there and said, okay. So he laid his hands on them. Well, right now, we, we can't lay hands on you because of the distance, but there's no distance in prayer. But we reach forth there. You reach forth. And show. Holy Spirit's right there. That's right. No more English or no more known language. And you just yield to Him now. Oh, Rongo, Rita, Sacri, Tos, Congrata, Brada, Redis, Congro, Cosingrata, Sangra, Cassi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in Corinthians, it says that I will sing in the Spirit, or I will sing in my known language. I will praise God, or I will praise in my known language. It says, I will, I will, I will. It's a choice. So, praise God for all the sensations and, 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 uh, and excitement that you have right now. But you don't have to have those feelings to speak in the Spirit. You can just simply yield and speak, just like you do in your known language, whatever it is. Uh, I know right now that in, in America I'm speaking English, but I also know in other countries I'm speaking Spanish and Japanese and all kind of different language because of the voice translations. So whatever known language you know, wherever you're from, but you can also tell that you can just yield and start speaking, not in your known language, but in your spiritual speaking in tongues. Amen? So just like you stop, look and listen for a second before you start speaking in your language, you, you have to yield to your language, whatever that is, and then start speaking. Well, you have to yield, stop, look, and listen for just a second and start speaking in tongues the same way. And go back uh, to Mike Riley tongues all the way through there and you'll get a good grasp on what that means to be filled with the Spirit and grow in the Spirit and speaking in tongues, why you need to speak in tongues, how to speak in tongues all through there, the benefits of speaking in tongues. Those are all free. You tap into it. So remember down below, you have a great day. God bless.